At this time, I'd like to bring up Miss Marty Coley. Yay, Marty. Good afternoon. Thank you, Clint, and thank you so much. You know, what an honor to have our governor, especially on a stormy day like we have today. Governor, thank you for taking time to come visit with us here at Graceville. You know, um, a long time ago, I actually lived in Graceville. It was kind of a long time ago. Uh, and I read, well, talking to Mr. Wheatley, he gave me a shot as a substitute teacher. I did. I had not quite finished my degree, but he let me sub for uh, for a few times. And I remember. Um, what was the football player saying? Anderson? Oh, gosh. Neil. Neil. Neil Anderson. I remember he walked me to class and I felt safe. Like, <laughs> students mess with me because Neil Anderson walked me to class. Well, I do it all over for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. You gave me a good start and I appreciate that. It's a pleasure to be here in Graceville. What a great community you have. Uh, you know, what we have in North Florida, I think, is really the best in the state. We've got people that want economic development, but they want to keep that hometown atmosphere that we have and we love. We have strong values here in North Florida, Governor, and we appreciate the leadership that you show in moving those values forward. And it's been an honor to serve you. It's been an honor to serve you in Tallahassee. I, this is the first session, this last session that we just finished, that I have had the opportunity up today and God bless you this is what we have what we need in Florida we need people that will brave the weather that they will brave anything to stand up and participate in government in our community and know what's going on and hold us accountable as your government officials so thank you. Thank you for being with us, Governor. It is an honor to have you here. We have our, we have our Governor and our Senate President. Wow, this is pretty big, folks. I have to tell you, it is pretty big. So. Thank you, Miss Marty. Um, at this time, I'd like to call up uh, Representative Matt Gates. I had something prepared, but I'm not even going to go in. I'm glad to have you over here with us. That, that's, those are the easiest introductions. Uh, well, thank you all so much for being here with us. And let me tell you something, Governor. Here in, in Jackson County, Clint Pate has put on a clinic in how to turn out Republicans and win elections in the Florida Panhandle for our party and for prosperity. So thank you, Clint. And uh, it's, you know, Marty says she was a substitute teacher here. I can tell you this, Marty Coley is still my teacher just about every day over in Tallahassee. Uh, and that's true for a lot of us. She keeps us straight and makes sure that we do the right things for the state. I'm, I'm really here to ask you to help help in the number one political objective that we have to have for the next couple of years. And that is re-electing Rick Scott to be the governor of Florida. That has got to be priority number one. You know, this governor has shown us what happens when we're more prosperous in this state. Our economy's growing, more people have jobs, and then that gives us a chance to do things like what Marty Coley's been telling us to do for quite some time. And this governor signed a budget that gave pay raises to our state workers who were due them because we were able to grow the economy and give people more jobs. And you see, this election that's coming up for Governor Scott, it means so much to us, and, and, and it means so much to you. We all need a governor in the state of Florida who's pro-life. We need a governor who believes in the Second Amendment and our right to bear arms, and this governor has been firm on those issues and fought for them. Now, uh, you know, uh, up in North Florida here, we've got our own way of doing things, like Marty said, our own values, our own principles. And a lot of times we have to take second fiddle to those folks in South Florida. But we haven't had to do that recently. You know, whenever we pick a fight with them, we know we're going to win because we got all the guns and we're better shots than they are. <laughs> but carrying the ball, carrying the ball in the Florida legislature, leading the Florida Senate, has been your senator, Don Gates. And let me tell you a little bit about, about Don Gates. I've known him for 31 years, uh, changed, changed my diapers, taught me how to ride a bike and how to drive, and now we're the first father-son team uh, in the Florida legislature. And Don Gates made sure that the number one priority of the Florida Senate this year was to pass real, meaningful ethics reform. 
real meaningful ethics reform because, you know, if, if we don't have a government that is worthy of you, of the good people we represent, then we're not, we're not worth much anything at all. And so uh, Senator Gates made that a reality. He's been fighting to make sure that whether it's in our local school systems or at Chipola College or, or at FSU, that, that we graduate people with the skills to actually go and get jobs that then bring in folks that want to start and grow their businesses in Florida. And so join me in welcoming my best friend and your senator, Don Gates. As usual, they stole all my best lines. <laughs> you know, uh, it is true that uh, Matt and I are the first father-son senator representative team in Florida history. At least that's what they tell us. And so a reporter was asking me, was I proud of that? I said, well, yeah, I'm proud of it, but what it really means is when the Capitol Press Corps says, what has Gates gone and done now? There's a 50-50 chance it ain't me. <laughs> I appreciate the chance to be here and to introduce our governor. You know, uh, when Rick Scott became the governor of Florida, we were losing jobs. And now, together with Texas, we're leading the nation in the creation of private sector jobs. When uh, Rick Scott became governor, we were adding to debt. And now, because of his leadership, we're paying down debt. When Rick Scott became governor, our state workers hadn't had a pay raise for years. And now, because of Rick Scott, our, pay, our state workers had their first pay raise in seven years. And some people say, well, the prosperity that Florida is beginning to enjoy and we're, you know, we haven't reached the millennium yet, but the prosperity we're beginning to enjoy, some people say it's Barack Obama. It's the federal government. It's the rising tide somewhere else. Well, let those people look at Pennsylvania where the state capital of Pennsylvania is declaring bankruptcy. Let them look at New York where with a state about the same size, they just passed what they call a lean budget of $141 billion, and this governor and Marty Coley and Matt Gates are leading a state with a budget uh, for about the same number of people for half the money. Let them look at New York. People who say it's not this governor, that it must be something else, that it's happening for everybody, need to look at the state of Illinois where first they increased taxes on job creators by 60%, and now the legislature is sitting in special session with a $100 billion deficit in their pension plan. They can't take care of the people they've made promises to, and so now what they're doing is trying to figure out will it be a tax increase or will they cut education and will they cut health care even more. I think if you look at what's happening in Washington, where they can't balance a budget and they're totally dysfunctional, when you look at the other big states in this country that can't seem to govern themselves and are driving themselves further in, date, uh, in debt and losing jobs, you know that we have something different. We have somebody who started life hard, with a hard scrabble beginning like many of us. You have a governor who worked himself up who built his prosperity with his own hands and his own mind, and therefore knows what we're up against. You have a governor who, on the toughest day of the year, will always stand the tallest. And I'll tell you this, it doesn't matter if it rains, it doesn't matter if it storms, nothing will prevent us here in Northwest Florida from leading the state to victory for the governor of Florida, Rick Scott. President, you do a great job. I always want to be introduced by Don Gates. <laughs> he does the best job of introducing you and telling you the story of what all of us have been doing on your behalf. Uh, for the last two and a half years, because of what you gave us the opportunity to do, we have worked to turn the state around. So first I want to thank Phil and Kelly for opening up uh, the restaurant today. Uh, it's great. I hear the, uh, the uh, fried shrimp is supposed to be outstanding. I'm supposed to come back here uh, often. I enjoy it. So thank you very much for doing that. Clint, congratulations on all the success, all the individuals you're getting elected uh, locally, and all the impact you have across the state. Let me talk about the individuals you've elected. First off, Marty Coley. She has done a great job, and she might be a teacher to, uh, to Matt Gates, but she's been a teacher to me. She tells me exactly what I need to focus on all the time. She's not quiet and shy about it. 
Uh, she is very aggressive and she gets her stuff done. So congratulations, you've elected a wonderful person. Representative Matt Gates might be young, but he's very committed to the things he believes in, and he gets them accomplished. So if you, look, if you go, up, go back, we've had three sessions now together. If you look at the things he's focused on, he has gotten them done. So he's done a great job, and he would be a great center uh, right here in this area to follow his dad's footsteps. So congratulations. Now, President Gates and I, we've had uh, three years work together, three sessions, and now one as governor and, uh, and president. Let me just talk about the things that we've done uh, on your behalf, all right? We pay down state debt $3 billion, okay? This state has been increasing state debt a billion dollars a year for 20 years, and for the four years before we became, I became governor, we increased state debt $5.2 billion. Not only did we pay down $3 billion worth of debt, we paid off $3.5 billion we owe the federal government on unemployment insurance. So now our goal is, is as that goes down, if you're, if you're in business, your unemployment insurance rates will start dropping. So we're doing this in a fiscally responsible manner. As the president said, our budget is half New York for the same number of people. And on top of that, if you live in New York City, their budget is half large for five, about, I think it's about five million people who live there. So up there, they're raising taxes all around the, the north, they're raising taxes, raising regulation, and it doesn't work. But we're doing work. We've cut taxes. We've cut regulation, we've, cut, we've streamlined the permitting process, and guess what? Jobs are coming back. 330,000 jobs in a little over two years. And that's in contrast to the four years before I became governor where we lost 832,000 jobs. And it wasn't because they tried, to, they tried to do the right things, but governors matter. Administrations matter. You've got to do the right thing, you've got to elect the right people. So we're heading in the right direction, there's still a lot left to do. But now we've gone from a budget deficit of $4 billion my first year, to a surplus of 1.2. So we can do the things like Representative Coley says, make sure we take care of the people who work in the state. Make sure we give our teachers a pay raise. All of our classroom teachers have the opportunity for a pay raise this year. We've increased funding for K-12 education. Two years in a row, a billion dollars a year. So our education system is going to continue to get better. But what's most important to our families? They want jobs, we're heading in the right direction. They want a better education. You should brag about our K-12 education system. Number two in the world in fourth graders in reading in the world. Number two, fourth and eighth graders, fourth and eighth graders, the biggest student achievement gains of any state in the country, many of the large states in the country. According to Education Week, six best states for K-12 education. And according to the National Council for Teacher Quality, we have the most effective teachers in the country. So they deserve a pay raise, we did it for them. It's the right thing to do. We are heading the right direction. Now, we're gonna have another race in a year, year and a half. These elections have consequences. We have to show up. We have to tell our story. You have a story. My story is similar to yours. I grew up in the public housing. My parents didn't have money. I live the American dream. I believe in it, just like you have. We've got to tell our stories, your story, my story, all of our stories, and say, everybody should be a Republican. There is nobody in the state that should not be a Republican. Think about it. If you want to be in business, you're clearly going to be a Republican because we know that we're going to try to make you more effective so you can solve your customers' needs, your, your, whether it's products or services. If you want a job, you're going to work for a company. And so if you want a job, you want to elect Republicans. If you want to be in education, you know, edu Republicans are going to take care of the education system to make sure they're best in the world. If you need to be on a safety net for a short period of time, you better believe you better be a Republican. Guess who's going to pay for that safety net? Somebody with a job. A business person, a business that pays those taxes. Everybody in the state should be a Republican. If you're an immigrant, you came here for the American dream, you should be a Republican. But we've got to tell our story. If we don't tell our story, then it's our fault that everybody doesn't vote our way. Everybody should be a Republican. If they do, we'll live, we'll have a better country, we'll live within the principles that we believe in, limited government, live the American dream. So thanks for the opportunity you gave me in 2010. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that any of us are doing, call us. We, re we return phone calls, and we want to get better every day. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thanks again for organizing this, Clint. And if I can do anything to be helpful, please give me a call.